What's up, guys? I'm Taylor at Go Power Sports. And this is your boy Flacco. Hey, uh, you guys do something video wise on this swing arm kit? My computer is literally smoking with emails right now. We got you, bro. We're about to install it right now. You guys keep up the good book. Today, we are going to show you the brand new Go Power Sports swing arm kit. We're going to mount it on this Mega Moto 80 and the peg relocation kit. We're gonna take the swing arm off, we're gonna take off the peg kit, and we're gonna show you how we installed it. Alright, so let's talk about what comes in the swing arm kit. First of all, your nitrogen field adjustable shocks the swing arm itself, and it'll be included with the axle and the necessary pivot bolt, both shock mounts, both swing arm mounts, and your chain tensioner bracket. And included is gonna be the dual piston hydraulic brake. Y'all may know it as the big brake. The one that gives you a lot of stopping power. <laughs> so over here, We've got the chain guide bracket. This is an optional add-on for this kit. We'll go through that later after we get the swing arm mounted. You will need a longer chain than what comes on these bikes. So here we have 420, uh, you can do 35 as well. And then we're gonna show you how to install the uh, peg kit. You use the stock pegs on these and we'll show you exactly how to mount that. So the tools we're gonna to be using on this build, are, um, it's good to keep a hammer around. We use a half inch box wrench, a 9 16 wrench, a 14 millimeter wrench, a three quarter wrench, 13 millimeter socket. Real handy to keep a pry bar around. A standard Allen set. A 17 millimeter socket, 9 16 socket, a 3 quarter socket, and needle nose pliers. First step we're going to do is get these swing arm mounts mounted onto this bike. They go just like this. And this is a full bolt on, no welding. You just get your collars on there lightly. And on this side, depending on your frame, all these are a little bit different. You might have to shave the top of this down with a grinder, but you won't be able to tell until you get your mount up there. On this one, we didn't have to touch it. It's kind of rule of thumb to just finger tight everything, then go back and torque everything down when you see that you got clearance with everything you need. Beautiful. Yeah, this one looking nice and smooth too. You wanna to get a zoom in of this? You can see right here, we just lucked out on this frame and we didn't have to touch it. But more than likely, you're gonna to have to shave that down just a hair. You'll see over here, I'm just, I'm not even using the tool right now. I'm just finger tightening. Now these brackets do come assembled. Um, so these are guaranteed to be well threaded. There won't be any welding burrs in here because we go ahead and make sure they're all cleaned up and put these together before we ship them. Two screws per collar. So you'll have six per side, a total of 12. And this whole kit, I know we painted this one red. This whole kit's gonna come unpainted. Um, really, I would recommend painting it instead of powder coat because such tight clearances on this whole kit due to frame differences, powder coat can sometimes be really thick in spots. 
and it'll really affect your spacing on everything. So you really, and Flacco's doing it, you really wanna make sure that you're tightening everything evenly. Don't fully tighten one collar before you do the rest. You wanna draw them down just really even, a little bit at a time. Just kinda stagger. And after I get them all torqued down, I like to check and make sure I don't have any big out of the ordinary gaps in between the actual bracket itself and the frame itself. That's good and tight. Okay, your side good? Yes, sir. All right, so we got the mounts bolted up. Uh, they are tight. Next step is gonna be hanging the swing arm in there. So on your pivot bolt in the kit, it's gonna come with a bunch of washers on there. Some of them you may need, some of them you may not. Depending on your frame and the width, you might have to stack washers on either side more than the other. You might need them even, but we did supply more than enough I think on to this, do the job. This particular one we used, if I'm not mistaken, we used two on one side, three on the other. I think it was two and one. Two and one? Yep. Yeah. And there's really no way of telling until you get it hung in there and work your swing arm up and down to make sure it's even in your frame. Beautiful. Should be lined up pretty good. Looks pretty good. Yep. So on this particular frame, Smooth. like he was saying, we got two over here, one over here. So this does have a lock nut. Um, you can run this down too tight. You could possibly crush one of these bronze bushings. So I usually like to run the stuff down to where you can really feel tension on it. Then we're gonna back it up just a hair, kind of like how you would do uh, an axle with wheel bearings. How's that? A little more? A little bit more. Right there. That's perfect. perfect. Yep. Next step, we're gonna get the top uh, shock mounts on here and then hook up our fully adjustable nitrogen shocks. For these, it's gonna be the exact same process as we did the uh, swing arm mounts. You're gonna wor wanna work them down evenly. Go finger tight at first. And really, depending on what tires and wheels you're running and what ride height you want, you're gonna have to move these up and down. Yeah. You might leave these loose until you get it set on the ground because then you can move your shocks up and down. I know quite a few guys have ran these all the way up to the top because they want that rear end real low for low. flat track. We chose to keep the fender on just because we've put on quite a few of these kits. They will make it a lot easier if this is your first time doing it to just pop that fender off real quick.
All right, next step, get these adjustable nitrogen shocks on there. These will come with the hardware. So you want washer on the outside to keep your bushing and rubber in place. And then the nut on the inside. Leave these a little loose or finger tight until you get the bottom mount on. Nice. These were nine sixteenths. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Now we've got the wheel. Next up, we're gonna go ahead and slap on the chain tension bracket. That is gonna go right here in these two forward most mounting holes. And this bracket is slotted about an inch. So you have a lot of tension adjustment right here in this bracket. Teamwork makes the dream. This forehead is always better. Much easier with a partner. This is the optional guide bracket. It does not come with the kit. I highly recommend this item. Some guys won't run it because they won't want to cut their frame just in case they move back to the original axle placement. If you use this, you do have to cut right here behind your original axle mount. Just whack those off. You can get some plastic plugs to put in there. Once you do that, I think it gives it a really clean look. If you look from the side, you know, you'd have a big hoop back here. Now you got more of the swing arm exposed, really cleans it up. With how long this chain is and the movement of the swing arm, we have really good geometry. If you look, the chain is gonna be right in line with your swing arm. That is perfect geometry. But with all the movement, the guide really helps. Yeah. Just throwing it onto the sprocket. It's not gonna be slapping around. This guide can go on here two different ways, but you want your smallest opening pointing towards the sprocket. Your large opening, which is gonna guide your chain in, you want towards the front. Ready to hang the tire? Yes, sir. Okay, so our spacers were same size, right? Yes. Yep. Washer. There we go. Okay. Now. Ooh, yeah. Can you guys do that again? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> also comes included with your kit is a dual piston hydraulic brake. Y'all may know it as the big brake. Gonna go ahead and install a 13 millimeter bolt from it. And there won't be any shim or anything. It's just gonna slide it over and break this. Gonna be included with two 13 millimeter bolts and washer. Just finger tight. Is that TJ? Nice. 
All right, y'all, we know a lot of y'all out there are wondering about a different wheel and tire setup that you've seen and you seen us install on our Easy 80. With the smaller particular tire and wheel setup, if you grind the inner side of your caliper, it may give you a little bit more room so that your wheel don't actually rub your caliper when rotating. You won't have to grind a lot of it. Literally just take your caliper and the inner side facing the wheel Take a grinder and grind it down. You'll see kind of like protruding ridges on the caliper itself that comes from factory. Remove the ridges, nice and smooth, and it should fit just like a glove. Yeah, so anytime you're running a Mega Moto wheel and you're wanting to hook it up to a dual to our dual piston caliper, you will have to do that. If you're running the V-tread, if you're running the ultimate street tire, yeah. if you're running a the Universal 53450, you won't have to. If you're running a 1556, you won't have to. But any of these fatter, wider tires, you will have to grind that down, whether it's with this swing arm kit or not. If you're doing this uh, brake on your regular one, you'll have to do it. Just to give you a little bit more clearance in between the caliper itself and the outside of the tire. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and reinstall our chain. Get this mask to link off. But it just that project looked like a big sign. At least with right in the garrison. When installing the chain, we're gonna go through our chain guide. Above our chain tensioner. Underneath and over our driven sprocket. Straight back to our rear sprocket. Underneath. Beautiful. Tail trails. <laughs> With this swing arm kit, you really need to run our tilt motor mount plate, which is designed specifically for this bike. It bolts up in the original engine mount holes, so you don't have to drill or slot anything. You just bolt that up, then you get tons of adjustment on your engine. It puts your pivot point perfectly in line with the swing arm, and it allows you to run this peg relocation kit. So to do that, you have to drill holes in your frame somewhere right in the middle of this plate. What we like to do is drill multiple hole patterns in there. So if you're not happy with uh, your first choice where you put the pegs, you can easily move it to a different hole location. This peg kit allows you to ride this bike a lot more aggressive. The original location is way up here, kind of cruiser style. It's gonna put all your weight on the front end if you stand up. Relocating those pegs more towards the center of the bike is gonna even out your weight when you stand up. You'll be compressing the swing arm and the shocks at the same rate. So you can really ride it hard. So these accept the stock pegs, stock springs, and stock bolts. It's a really easy kit to install. Just take off your originals, put them on this new bracket. They were in the front, but I want to try this back set. I tend to like mine back, brother. It Rick feels sporty. Rick at Bust and Knuckle Builds put his like butted up, up against, against it. here. Yeah. I really like that. All right, so we got this bad boy all buttoned up. As you can see, we got all our necessary brackets installed. We got the swing arm hung. Got our chain tensioner installed with the correct chain tension. Um, if you want to come around to this side, you can see that we got our dual piston brake caliper installed as well. We went ahead and got the foot peg relocation bar installed. Looking good. All right, today we showed you on this Megamoto 80 frame how to install the new Go Power Sports swing arm kit. 
We did every nut and bolt on there, real detailed process, and then we showed you how to install the peg kit, the repositioning peg kit. Y'all make sure y'all leave us some comments down below. Hit that like, subscribe button. Send us some postcards. Yeah. Get at us. Yeah. Make sure you send <laughs> us pictures. Let us know how your project's coming, some racing videos, whatever you want to send. We'll share it.